The picture I'm holding in front of you is about 75 years old. This would have been between 1945 and 1950. That's my parents. Daddy looked like he got a mustache, but Daddy never had a mustache in his life. That's my mother, my sister Wanda, my sister Jeanette, and me, my brother Don. We are the three girls still remaining. We don't look quite like that now, but this gives you an idea of what Easter Sunday looked like. I'm sure this is what we wore for Easter Sunday. I'm going to guess about 1949. Look at our hair. Isn't that crazy? But look at our dresses. Aren't they pretty? The one my sister Jeanette is wearing, the turquoise green or teal green, dress was handmade. It looked like a tailor-made dress. My pretty little pink suit, well, in that day, it was size seven. Also in that day, the suit had to be altered to fit me because it was too large. Go ahead and laugh. Laugh all you want to, but that's what I looked like when I was a teenager, early teenager. But I wanted to just show you this picture simply because we are the three remaining sisters, and this was right around Easter when this photograph was taken. Now, keeping that in mind, Many Easter's have passed since then. Many stories could be told. And even at that, each story is very similar. Everybody came home for Easter. We had the big Easter dinner, just like you have at Thanksgiving and at Christmas. And oh gosh, getting to eat Mama's nutmeg feather cake I couldn't wait, but she wouldn't let anybody touch that cake. It sat right in the middle of the dining room table. At that time, we had a big round table with cabriole legs. It also had a buffet, one of those buffet on legs that had um, a mirror across the top. And on each end of the mirror, was a scene, you know, like a pretty um, trail or trees or a uh, small cabin in the background, that kind of scene. It had drawers down the middle and on each end was a little door. Anything that needed to stand up went inside the little cabinet with the doors. The drawers held Mama's good linens. She didn't have many. It held a pretty napkin, the pretty tablecloth, and uh, let's see what else. Oh, of course, her silverware. Now, at that time, I believe Mama's only china and we didn't consider it china. It was just everyday dishes because a lot of it came out of oatmeal boxes and Rinso Blue and uh, what other um, cereal boxes. You got sometimes dish towels and things. But I can remember reaching down in a box and finding a little dish about this big, what you might call a little berry bowl. It was kind of exciting because it came free in the box. It was a premium item, and it was called Virginia Rose. That was uh, the 
China pattern at that time. So those were our China dishes that we ate off of on holidays, only on holidays. And I loved setting the table. It was so much fun. It was as much fun then as it is now. But we had so little to work with. But Mama's nutmeg feather cake sat right in the center of the table. You can be sure of that. Now, we weren't the kind of family that had candles on the table. That was, I guess you'd say, a step above us because we didn't even have the candle holders to use. But Easter, all of the kids, the kids at that time were the grandkids. They were all there. They all had an Easter basket. Most of those Easter baskets, let's say they were at least six kids. Their Easter baskets stayed at Mama's house from one year to the next. You didn't get a new basket every year. Oh, no. You used the same basket that you had the year before. And Mama had a place on her back. Uh, it was on the back porch. There was a door up on the ceiling. I didn't know what it was. But you pulled that down. And it was a ladder that took you into the attic. That's where Mama kept the Easter baskets the rest of the year, and they all had that pretty shiny green grass in them. It stayed in the basket too. So once a year, Mama had someone climb the ladder, bring down the Easter baskets, and they were lined up for the kids. And if there was a new grandchild that had come along, they got a new basket, but it remained their basket from then on. Eggs, eggs, eggs. We spent all day Saturday dying eggs. Now, we didn't have all those fancy kits and those little uh, labels that you could put on and they would leave a little bird print or a chicken print on your boiled egg. Our dye was made with food coloring and vinegar. You use vinegar in the water to color your eggs. Sometimes, sometimes you'd put one, you'd hold the eggs. You had to, we didn't have any utensils to work with. We just used our hands. You'd hold one end of the egg down in the cup of dye, and you'd stand there and hold it and hold it until it turned a pretty shade of pink, pink. Well, you took that out, let it dry a little bit, and then you turn the egg around and you put it in yellow. There's a cup there, teacups, each teacup had a different color of dye. And then sometimes we just put it in the pink and put it in the blue and put it in the yellow and put it in the green. You didn't know what you would come out with. By then, it might turn out to be gray or purple, but that didn't matter. So we always had one special egg that, that we could dye, and that was going to be the prize egg. When We had a big, big yard, lots of little tufts of weeds and bushes, and, and like uh, the... Uh, we had the lily of the valley that ran along the edge of the house, and Mama had her uh, irises. Oh, she had the most beautiful irises. Those big old-fashioned ones that had the purple, uh, had the little purple tongue down the middle of each petal. Purple and yellow. Gold, I should say. Looked like gold but I loved Mama's irises along. They grew along the branch. So that was basically Easter. And while dinner was being fixed, the kids had already received their Easter basket. 
they all went down in the yard and somebody, one of the adults, would go out and hide the eggs. And then later, another one would hide the eggs. They took turns. And that afternoon, I'm telling you, you better like boiled eggs because the eggs were peeled, the salt shaker was brought out, and we ate boiled eggs. That was our treat for the afternoon. Mm, don't think I could do that today. But Easter was pretty special. Everybody had their new Easter outfit. Oh my gosh. I can remember when Mama used to uh, try to keep it a secret from Daddy about uh, new outfits. Here's us girls. It might be two girls, might be four girls. It, it just depended on the year and how old you were. And we all got a new outfit. Now, it wasn't a simple thing. We begged and we pleaded and we bargained and we agreed to do anything that we had to do, even washing the windows if that was necessary to get those new shoes. Oh yes, we had to go down to French's shoe store. Two brothers had this shoe store. Nothing fancy about that shoe store. You, you just opened the door and there was a long room with shelves on two sides and big shelves down the middle and they went almost to the ceiling with shoe boxes. But that's where we bought our shoes because they didn't cost as much as they did at belts and pennies. And we would try on, my sister Wanda and I would go together. Mama would give us $3 each. That had to buy our shoes regardless of whether we liked it or not. So Mr. French was, he was such a nice man and he was so helpful. He, he tried his best to please us with our three dollars. And sometimes the shoes we liked best were three ninety nine. We couldn't buy those. We just had three dollars each. Mr. French would let us have our Easter shoes for three dollars. This was every year. That's the way it worked. Well, you saw the dresses that my sisters had on. You saw the little suit that I wore. Like I said, it was a size seven linen suit. I mean, I was dressed to the nines. Yes, I was. I loved that suit. It fit so beautifully. And I kind of like being that size. Never been that size since. But still, I've got the photograph to prove that I was at one time. My two sisters were wearing the high heels then. I was still wearing flats. Flats with a little buckle across the foot. You saw my brother in his sport coat. And of course, Mom always wore her hat. Now, I don't know why we didn't have on hats that year. Because ordinarily, we had a new purse. We had new white gloves. And we had our Easter bonnet. From head to toe, we had on new clothes, new outfit, and did we feel pretty. But it took a lot of begging to get those outfits. Mama, always, we don't have the money. We can't afford it. But you know, kids could prod and beg long enough and yeah, Mama gave in. We got what we wanted. Always got what we wanted. But we went through pure torment, thinking we weren't going to have a new outfit for, for Easter. 
but we got that outfit for Easter. And we had some pretty clothes. We wore beautiful clothes in those days. Didn't matter what store it came from. So you saw the picture. You saw my two sisters that are still living. I just got through talking to one of them. And I think we talked for about an hour and a half now. Right now, I can't tell you what we discussed. It must have been pretty important to spend an hour and a half talking to each other. She lives in Western Kentucky. So anyway, of course she, she called to see how my condition was and see if my nose had gone down. See, my hair kind of covers, not so. It's right back here. It's kind of soft too. You know, never had anything like that before. So I'm getting better. Don't want anyone worrying about me. My doctor, he's a good doctor, and he assured me that I was going to be okay. Everything's going to get back to normal. Now, I don't remember what I really was going to talk about. Um, I had been looking at some photographs, and I don't know what I did with them. And one of those photographs was... Uh, a picture of what we called the painted lady. Are you familiar with that? You know what it means when you say the painted lady? Well, I can tell you one thing. You can go to a library and look up books in the library. They'll have them that have been published on the painted lady. A lot of those were houses in California, like in San Francisco. You know those houses up on the hill that go they go straight down. You know the Steve McQueen movies where they go up and down those hills. And those beautiful old houses. Every now and then you would see one that's called the Painted Lady. That meant it had a lot of gingerbread, a lot of pretty trim, banister railings, uh, different roof lines, you know, the high ones, the low ones, the uh, windows, and, oh, there was all sorts of trim. And they were uh, wood, you know, wood paneled houses. And each section would be painted a different color. Your gingerbread along the roof line might be a dull green. And then above that would be the trim. It might be a rich gold, golden tan. Come down to the windows, the border, or the, uh, what do you call them? You know what I'm talking about. The trim on the windows might be purple. Deep blue. It went from one color. There was, there was no limit to how many colors or shades of colors that would be painted on one house. Love those houses. My sister lived next door to one of those houses in Kentucky. Oh gosh, it was old. Yeah, Victorian. Lots of pretty trim. And I can remember looking and thinking, oh gosh, that's the prettiest house. Never got to see inside it. In fact, the houses were up on a steep hill. That hill was, well, let's see, which way can I put it? Those, that hill was deep like this. You had steps that went all the way up. It wasn't easy getting up to the top of that hill. And there was your painted lady. You could look at it from the street below. As far as I know, that house is still there, and I admired it 
every time I saw it. Now, when I was living in uh, Tennessee, I worked with a lady who had a son living in, I think, I don't know if it was Chicago or New York City. And she told me that her son's house was in a publication called The Painted Lady. Oh my gosh. I knew what she meant, but I'd never seen a book. She brought the book to work. Big, thick, hardback book. Oh goodness. If you love beautiful old Victorian homes, what a delight it was to go page by page. But it wasn't his house that was the featured attraction. It was just one window, one small, oh, I don't know, the window was probably two and a half feet wide, maybe. It could have been an octagon shape. I, I've forgotten I saw it, but I can't remember the details. But it was a small window on one side of the house. Now that's what the people publishing the book came to his home for was to take pictures of one little window. It was a beauty, I'll tell you that. I was impressed. And of course my friend was too, because she said while they were working on the window, she got to go visit them and watch them decorate and use, they would use anywhere from three to six or eight different colors of paint. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, go to a library somewhere and see if they've got any books called The Painted Lady. If you like beautiful old houses, you'll be impressed. Now, I don't know why I told you that story. It just, it's just whatever pops in my head. You know, I'm get, getting to the point I'm running out of things to talk about. Now, one lady was looking back at one of my old stories that I'd told. It had to be a year and a half ago. And in the video, she spotted a painting behind me on the wall and she wanted to know about the painting. It was of a little girl. I had to look it up to see what painting she meant. She wanted to know where it came from. So I looked up the story and I saw the painting over my shoulder and I said, oh, that one. It was a painting of a little girl with a little bonnet on, little one of those, one of those little bonnets like the uh, the maids used to wear, tiny little bonnet over their hair, and she was sitting with knitting needles and yarn in her lap, and she had fallen asleep holding those needles. Oh, it's such a precious precious picture. Now, I don't know the name of the picture. I don't know who painted it. I probably could do a little research and find out where it came from. But the reason I had it, mine was just a print. I used to go to a framing shop on where they built windows and put in glass in windows and in picture frames. They made picture frames or photographs, whatever. I used to go there and borrow their uh, catalogs. They had catalogs that was full of famous paintings. You could order the prints. You know what I'm talking about. You probably ordered prints yourself. 
So that's where I would get my old prints. I would order them when they came in. I would have the shop glue my print to a hardboard, what I call a hardboard, fiber board. It was about a oh, quarter inch or uh, half inch, half inch thick, nice and dirty. And they would seal the print to that board. I would take it home and I began working on it. I bought a tube of, uh, well, I forget what it was called. It was a clear gel. I coated the picture with this clear gel with my paintbrushes, you know, give it the uh, brush stroke look. And when that dried, I, uh, well, first I had to do a spray job on it to protect the print itself. Then I used the clear gel and I wanted it to look like an original painting. So I brushed and I brushed. Let's see if I've got a paintbrush here, right here. You know, I just happened to have this sitting here. It wasn't like I had to go on it. So I would brush, brush, brush. Now I'm not an artist. You better believe I'll fake it any time I can. So I brushed, brush, brush, and you know, you know, just like, just like I was painting on this right here, painting. And then I do the little dot stuff so it would have the raised look, like, like the paintbrush, put those little raised looks on it, you know. And for that matter, you could see the dents in the little girl's face. You could see the shadows, all the smoothness. Oh, I had to make the, the cheeks very smooth, the forehead, and I could do a lot of swishing here and there in her hair to give it that real artist brush look. All right, that would take me two or three days to get that finished. I wanted it to look real. And after I did that, it dried and I got out my oil base paint. My oil base, I usually used a, see I'm having to go back about 30 years to remember what I was using. Uh, it, I think it was a special walnut coloring. With that, I took a soft cloth and I dipped the cloth into the oil base and I rubbed a little bit of it off to one side and then I started rubbing down, rubbing down, getting that all over, all over my picture because I wanted it to look like an antique, you know, the color white. You didn't want it looking white. You wanted it to look a little tarnished look. So then you rubbed it on and you, you buffed it. You buffed it so it would have shadows so that the, the stain would get lighter if it, appeared too dark in places, you could keep rubbing till you got it, the texture you wanted it. Now, when that was finished, when it dried, I gave it another coat of a spray gel to protect it. The picture, I'm going to look, up, see if I can, while I'm talking to you, I'm going to see if I can find the picture. Now this little thing won't do much for me, but I'm going to see 
what I can find on this. Just hold on there now. You can look at me, look my pretty red glasses while I'm talking. And I'm going to find that. Mm -hmm -hmm. Come on, let's go. Come on, where is it? You know what that, how tough this is when you want to find something, you can't find it. And I'm not finding it. So here we go. Just hold on. Do you like this shirt? This has been a really nice shirt to wear. Okay. I'm going to, uh, let's try again. One more time. I'm the world's worst when it comes to this, something like this. I'm not finding it. Yeah, I'm not finding it. Leave it to me. But, okay. I just might get it this time. Facts First presents Ooh. things that you never knew about Dolly Parton. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell you're so you never miss a single video. This. Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton is a living legend. Whether you're a fan of country... Well, you know, I was picking out Dolly Parton there. But that wasn't what I wanted. <laughs> it doesn't want to give it to me. That's unusual. I nearly always find what I'm looking for after I needed it. I wanted to show you the picture of the little girl that the lady was referring to. Now, let's see, I've talked long enough, haven't I? I've gone over my time limit. I gotta have a drink of my Dr. Pepper. Take a look at this. See that? What do you think? I got good friends, haven't I? This was sent to me by a friend in Arizona. I'm probably the only person who got one. Oh, sure I am. I bet you anybody that drank Dr. Pepper has ordered one of these, too. And it even makes your Dr. Pepper taste better when it's in a container like that. And you know what? This holds a full tray of ice. I put that in there, fill it up with Dr. Pepper, and I can drink on it all day long. That keeps me pretty happy. Keep my whistle kind of wet, too. So, folks, I don't have much to say today. I do want to say this, though. I started this YouTube channel because I wanted to entertain people with my stories. I wanted you to know about the things I've done through my life. And these are all true stories. I think some of them are pretty good. So that's what I was here for. I'm here to entertain you as well as keep myself busy. And because I enjoy storytelling. I'm not one to talk, Bible talk. I don't feel like it belongs in my channel. I am a Christian. I grew up in a good Christian home. My dad was one of the best Bible teachers I've ever known. 
Not only I think that, but it was said many times by scholared men. But what I'm trying to say is I don't want to take your time reading Bible scriptures to you. In fact, if you want Bible scripture, most of you are like me. You've got a Bible. You can read your own scripture. Take a look at this. Look at this. What do you think? My daughter gave me this book. Look how thick it is. See the gold edging? Oh, I love that. Nice leather Bible. And the best part is, look at the print. She knew I needed a Bible with large print. This is the new, what they call, the new King James Version. I'm showing it to you because if I want scripture, I have my own Bible. I can read the scripture. It has index with a concordance in it that you are looking for specific words you can find those words. It will give you the scripture to go to. And you have this. You don't need me to be reading scripture to you day after day after day. I only want to converse with you, communicate with you, Tell you good stories, a few sad stories, some humorous stories. I do try to keep you laughing because we need laughter in our lives. I'm not a Bible teacher, so don't expect that from me. And I don't want to bore you to death by reading the scripture to you, I want to tell you, pick up your own Bible and read the scripture yourself. You don't need someone reading it to you. So I'm going to stop with that. I just wanted it made clear that that's not the kind of stories I'm telling you. The stories for everyday life, the stories from the past, and maybe a few stories that will lead you into the future. I hope you like the things I tell you. I try my best to please you. And I figure if I can please myself, I'm gonna be the hard one to please. So if I can please myself, and if I can make myself laugh, you will laugh too. This is Saturday night. You probably already done your hair for tomorrow. You're going to church. Some of you will. Maybe most of you will. However, I'll be hanging around home. I don't get out much these days because I've got to cure myself. You know how that goes. I've been warned. I've been told. And I've got to listen to what they tell me. The Lord has taken care of me during this major issue I've had with my head. One last thing about it. This bushy hair covers the knots on my head. So I've had several knots put on my head through the years, but this one just about took me under. 
and I thank the Lord for saving me. It was all in his power. You'll be good. Let me know what you think of the things I say. And if I offend you, I apologize. But I'm here to entertain you. And I hope I have. Thank you.